Hi, welcome to Cooking with Chris. And today we're going to be making some garbanzo bean baked beans. They're homemade, everything's from scratch, including the sauce. And I'm just gonna go over the ingredients real quick. We're gonna be using six of these Roma tomatoes. Now these particular ones are pretty big, so I'm probably only gonna end up using five of them. So depending on how big your tomatoes are, you might get five, you might get six. Uh, just kind of judge for yourself. It won't hurt anything if they're too big. We're gonna be using three tablespoons of agave, agave sweet nectar. Now, we're gonna be using a half a cup of date syrup and we're gonna be making the date syrup from scratch, scratch using dates. And um, we'll go over that in a second. A quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Now, the allspice is something that I added to this ingredient list. This is not my uh, recipe. This is from Ty's Conscious Kitchen. But I went ahead and added the allspice because I thought it was a nice touch. And you can add to, to taste. Um, typically, you want to start off with probably a quarter teaspoon of the allspice, a half a teaspoon of the ginger, two teaspoons of onion powder, two teaspoons of sea salt, two cups of prepped garbanzo beans. So what I did was I took two cups of garbanzo beans. I soaked them in water overnight and make sure to put enough water in there so that they have enough water to absorb so they get nice and plump because they're not gonna come out of the package this big and plump. Now I've also added some peppers, some red and uh, green peppers, some onion, some mushroom. You can add that to yours if you want to, you don't have to. And then before I forget, we also are gonna be playing with a little bit of this ground clove. We're gonna be using an eighth teaspoon of the ground clove. So it's a very powerful herb. You don't need to use a lot of it. And um, that's pretty much all the ingredients. So let's get into this. We just went ahead and put the two cups of soaked garbanzo beans in a pot. Now what I'm gonna do is I covered, you can see I covered them with water. So you just wanna make sure that they don't dry out. They're gonna cook for roughly an hour maybe more, maybe less, depending on your stove, depending on how you like the texture of your beans. I like mine soft, like baked beans that you might get from a can. So I will usually put it on high to get it boiling. Um, now these will boil over if you cover them. So I usually do one of these deals where you cover it like this. I mean, mine has this little blowhole, but it's not very good. Uh, or I guess you can leave them uncovered. It's just take them a lot longer to cook that way. And we're gonna let these cook for about an hour. Now, once they get boiling, I'll come back and I'll turn this down to about one or two. Depends. Um, I'm not in a rush today, so I'll probably put it on one and I'll let it cook for maybe an hour and 30 minutes. You're gonna take the Roma tomatoes and you're just gonna take a knife and you're gonna make an X in them right at the top. All right, then you're gonna take this tomato and you're gonna put it in a pot of boiling water for about 50 seconds or so. And what'll happen is the skin will start peeling off and that way you can peel the tomato. I believe it's called stewing the tomato. And that will make for a more creamy sauce without the pulp of the skin. As you can see, we've got our tomatoes, our tomatoes sitting in this boiling water. And the trick is to, when you take it out of the boiling water, you transfer it to ice cold water. Now that used to have ice in it, but the ice has since melted, but it's still ice cold. So as soon as these are finished sitting here for a few seconds, I'm gonna throw them in there. And then it shocks them, and then the skin comes off, and then it's easy to peel a tomato that way. Over here, I've got the beans going, and as you can see, they're cracked. I've already turned the temperature down to about one and a half, and uh, this, this foam stuff is what boils over, so you gotta watch that, otherwise your stove's gonna get dirty. Okay, so this, I had to chop the tomatoes up a little bit in the blender to get them all in. They were too big. Uh, I think this, I really only needed three. I did put the last one in there, you can kinda see, so I'll blend that one up. So because these were so big, I only used four in this recipe. Now we're gonna just add our seasonings to this little blender cup. Uh, I use a Ninja. And then once we get all the seasonings in, we're going to blend it all together and it's going to be this beautiful, delicious taste. A fourth t 
teaspoon of cayenne pepper. You guys can definitely like alter this if you want to. You don't have to use the exact ingredients. It's all kind of to taste. Okay, we're gonna go to the ginger and we're gonna use half a teaspoon of ginger, two teaspoons of sea salt, two teaspoons of onion powder, a quarter of this allspice. And really with the allspice, it's obviously just a taste thing, but also depending on how much tomato you use and depending on how much flavor you want, you might alter it. I would just start off with a small amount first, and then if you feel like you want to add more, you can add more. And then we're going to be adding the ground cloves. Now the ground cloves you want to be careful with, it's only an eighth teaspoon. I definitely wouldn't use more than a quarter. It's just a very powerful spice. And, like I said earlier guys, you can add the red and green peppers or whatever else you might want to season it with. Uh, mushrooms are great for filling, just trying to like thicken it up and you know, that sort of thing. Same thing with the onion here. It's just for filling. Now the last ingredient we're gonna be adding are these dates, but before we add them, we're gonna make it into a syrup. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that next. You're gonna be taking about a cup of these dried dates and you can either pit them before or you can pit them after. It's not really that serious. Uh, one cup is going to make more than enough of the date syrup because you're going to be combining one cup of the pitted dates, dates with one cup of water. So you're going to have quite a bit of liquid. But as you can see, it's not super precise or anything like that. I've just filled a cup with some dates and then I'm going to start pitting them which is simple. I just take a knife and I slide it down the middle, being careful not to cut all the way through and cut myself. There's your little pit, and then you're gonna pop that little monster out, and you're gonna do that for each one of these. And then once you've pitted it, you're gonna put it in a cup of boiling water and let them stew for about, I don't know, five, 10 minutes, it depends, it's on you. After that, we're gonna put them in a blender cup and we're gonna blend them all up and make the syrup out of them. So I will be right back. Okay guys, so this is what the date syrup is gonna look like when it's finished. Um, the consistency is thicker, cause that's the way I want it. If you add more water, it'll be thinner. No big deal one way or the other. The Obviously the thinner it is, the less sweet it is, but it's a pretty sweet combination, so it's gonna be sweet regardless. So we're just gonna do half a cup of that and we're going to be adding our agave. Now, we're gonna do, I'm gonna do three teaspoons. You could do three tablespoons. It depends on how sweet you want it. I can always add a little more sweetness to it later on if I feel it's necessary. And then I'm going to go ahead and blend all of these ingredients together and show you what we got. Okay, so this is what the sauce looks like. Mine's somewhat runny and you know, it's gonna be about this consistency, but it's okay if it's a little runny because you're gonna be adding this to the garbanzo beans and you're gonna be cooking them for another hour. So some of the water will cook off. If it ends up being too runny, do what I like to do and add some garbanzo bean right into the sauce. Now, I'm not actually finished with these. These probably have another 45 minutes left on them. But when you're finished, when you're finished uh, cooking them, you can actually, uh, they have little skins on them. You can take the skins off. Now, some people like to try to take the skins off before you cook them. I think it's pretty difficult doing that. Uh, if you cook them too soft, it'll be hard to take the skins off afterwards. So it's kind of like on you, or you can leave the skins on there. It's not really a big deal. I've eaten them both ways. I don't see a big difference. This time around, I'll probably end up leaving the skins on. But when this is finished cooking, all I'm gonna do is drain all the water out. And then I'm gonna put this sauce in, in the place of the water. I'm gonna bring it to a boil like I did the first time. And I'm gonna bring it back down to a simmer once it starts boiling. At that point, I'll add my vegetables that I have here. And like I said, that's completely optional and you could add whatever you want. And then you're gonna let it cook for another hour. And you could take a little spoon, you, could, you know, take, taste them, see the texture. You want them to cook a little bit more, cook them a little bit more. It's no big deal. 
as long as they don't dry out. And like I said, this is pretty liquidy. So if you want to cook them longer, leave them liquidy. If you want to cook them a little bit less time and maybe, uh, you know, that you don't want them as liquidy, go ahead and add just a little bit of garbanzo bean flour. I mean, I just literally sprinkle like less than a quarter cup in at a time. And then I, you know, I spoon it around a little bit to see the consistency. And that's all folks. I'll see you guys next time.